The Commonsol Meta HT is arguably one of the most popular and highly sought after hardtails on the market right now. And for good reason. It's led the way in aggressive geometry, styling, and value. And in this episode of Bespoke, we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning and talk about the founding of Commonsol Bikes, the introduction of the Meta HT, and of course, I'm gonna get you all caught up in all of the current Meta HT models. As with all my videos, I've got timestamps down in the description. So if you're only here to look at one particular bike or you just care about the geometry, cruise down there, click on that link, and that'll take you where you need to go. But the rest of us are gonna start by going back to the year 2000 and talk about the origin of Commonsol bikes. Commonsol was founded in the Andorra region of Spain by Max Commonsol in the year 2000. And since then has supported dozens of legendary riders who have accrued countless gold medals, world cups, and world firsts. And ever since those early days, Commonsol has prioritized the more gravity side of our sport. And holding true to that, in 2009, they launched what is probably their most famous bike of all time, the full suspension Commonsol Meta Enduro bike. But it took an additional five years for the Meta name to finally make it onto a hardtail. And it was that bike, the Commonsol Meta HT for hardtail, that first got me stoked on these hardcore hardtails that I now ride all the time. While I never did get a chance to ride that first generation Meta HT, its aggressive geometry and even more aggressive paint job still influences the way that I choose bikes and build bikes today. That bike was offered in aluminum, steel, and even titanium, and most of the models rolled on 27.5 inch wheels. The only exception to that was actually the bike I wanted most, which was the Meta HT SX, which was built up on 26 inch wheels. That bike was intended to be a true free ride hardtail that you could take on big drops in the desert or ride a slope style course on. All of those bikes came with a 66 degree head tube angle, which was super slack for the day. And that Meta HT AM or all mountain model came with a 150 millimeter fork, whereas the SX model came with a 140 millimeter fork. And while I could sit here and stare at this bike all day, I'm sure the rest of you guys are ready to get on to the current range, which to be honest, isn't too different than that original 2014 bike. Today, Commonsol offers the Meta HT in a whopping five different build options, four different kids build options, and then of course, the frame only. The frame on this bike was last revised in 2022, and that year they made some super positive changes. That being a taller stack height, a slacker head tube angle, a steeper seat tube angle, and my personal favorite, a shorter seat tube, which is still kind of on the taller side of the spectrum at 465 millimeters for the size large, but it's a good bit shorter than it used to be. In my opinion, the head tube and seat tube are just about perfect at 64 and a half and 74 and a half degrees respectively. I've recently spent some time on a bike with a 77 degree seat tube, and I can say that at least for me, I don't like the feel of that super steep seat tube on a hardtail because as you sink into your sag, it just gets steeper and I feel like I'm way over the front end, at least when I'm sitting down. The chain stays and the bottom bracket drop are pretty much average for this category of aggressive trail hardtails at 432 millimeters for the chain stays and a bottom bracket drop of 40 millimeters. Something that's not very average about this bike though is the reach, which is still super short. The size large has a reach of only 450 millimeters. And this short reach has always surprised me because I feel like Commonsol really markets this as like an enduro hardtail, which it definitely can be if you size up, but I think that smaller reach also reflects the fact that this bike is designed to be very playful and jibby and almost like a trials bike. Another thing I like about this frame is that it now comes with SRAM's UDH or universal derailleur hanger, which means if you break off your derailleur hanger doing some stupid trick in the bike park, you can go to pretty much any shop and they should be able to have that for you. Sadly, the Meta HT frame does not come with ISCG tabs. So if you're wanting to run a bash guard or a chain guide, you're gonna need to get an adapter. Just like all of Commonsol's bikes, the Meta HT frame is built entirely out of aluminum and you're gonna get no other options other than aluminum. And I have to say, Commonsol has their aluminum frame building down to a T. It's honestly one of the best looking aluminum frames I've ever seen. You can barely see the welds, the paint color looks great. It's a beautiful bike. Another thing I like about it is that it is able to run either a 27.5 or a 29 inch wheel and is internally routed for your back brake, your derailleur cable, and your dropper post. The frame also comes with a built-in chainstay protector, which is something I wish every bike would do. So really glad that they have that on here. If you wanna get the frame alone, it's gonna cost you $650 and you're gonna have the choice of three options. The first being pure white, which as you'd guess is pure white. After that, we've got dark slate, which is kind of a gunmetal gray with a little brown in there. And then Keswick green, which is kind of a dark greenish blue. 
So that should be just about all you need to know about the geometry and the frame. But let's talk about those five different ways you can buy this bike as a complete. The cheapest way you're gonna be able to get a fully built common saw hardtail is with the Meta HT Origin, which will set you back $1,400. This is the only bike in the lineup that you're not gonna get an air shock with. Instead, you're gonna get the RockShox 35 Silver, which is a 150 millimeter coil sprung fork that has rebound adjustment, but no compression adjustment. The bike includes SRAM's SX drivetrain, which say what you will about the reliability of it, it's pretty cool that you get a 12 speed drivetrain straight off the bat with this bike. You're also gonna get some two piston SRAM level T brakes. If you plan to use this bike how I believe Common Cell has designed this frame, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade those to some nice four piston brakes down the road. The bike rolls on E13 rims laced to some formula hubs and comes with Maxxis dissector tires. Common Cell specs the small and medium bikes with a 27.5 rear wheel and the large and extra large bikes as full 29. But as we'll talk about in just a second, they do offer some bikes that are full 27.5 in all sizes. A big bummer for me is that this Origin model does not come spec with a dropper post, but you can actually spend $150 more to get the Kind Shocks Rage dropper included with your Origin build. And a cool thing is that you can actually choose the amount of travel that you want with that dropper all the way up to 190 millimeters. And there's not too many brands that let you choose your dropper travel when you go ahead and buy the bike. So kudos to Common Saw for adding that as an option for the Origin. The Meta HT Origin is offered in heritage green, which is kind of sage green, as well as sand, which is a cool tan color. The next tier up is the Meta HT Ride, which will set you back $1,600 and is actually available either as a full 27.5 or a full 29 inch build for all sizes. Most of the spec on this ride model is actually the same as the Origin, but a big difference is the fork that it runs. The ride models all come with RockShox 35 Gold Fork, which is an air fork running that tried and true Debon air spring that RockShox has been using for years. Regardless of your tire size, it's gonna come with 150 millimeters of travel, which I think is just about perfect for an aggressive hardtail. And other than that fork, from what I can tell, the spec is pretty much identical to the Origin model. You get the same SX drivetrain, you get the same wheels, the same alpha components. They seem like essentially the same bike, just with a different fork, plus the option to run it in full 27.5. The 27.5 inch ride model is actually the only Meta HT that doesn't come with two dissector tires. Instead, you're gonna get a recon in the back and a high roller up front, both 2.8 inches wide. While this may decrease grip a little bit, it's gonna decrease rolling resistance even more, which I think is a good thing when you're riding a plus size tire. The Meta HT Ride is offered in sand, that same color that we saw on the Origin, as well as dirt, which is darker than sand. The 27.5 inch model comes in at 30.9 pounds, whereas the 29 inch model comes in at 31.3. Working our way up in price, we now get to the Meta HT Essential, which is gonna set you back $2,000. And like the name implies, I think this bike has pretty much everything you need to go out there on a nice aggressive trail ride without needing to worry about stuff breaking on you or not being suitable for aggressive riding. All Essential models come with the RockShox Yari RC fork in 150 millimeters, which comes with the debonair spring and then the motion control damper. While this fork might not have all the tiny little adjustments and it might be a little bit heavier than the top end stuff, it's a super robust fork and it shouldn't give riders any problems, even big guys who like to push their bikes hard. It's also gonna come with SRAM's NX drivetrain, which to be honest, seems like a bit of an undersell for a bike that's gonna cost you $2,000. It does, however, come with SRAM's guide brakes, which is actually what I run on my bike. They're super strong and I think fit this bike very well. The wheels and tires see a bit of an upgrade as well. The rims will now be coming from Spank in the hubs, still from Formula, but a bit of a better model. You're still gonna get the Maxxis dissector tires front and back, but this time with the 3C Max Terra compound, as well as an EXO Plus tire in the back. As you'd guess for a $2,000 hardtail, the Essential does come with a dropper post, and that's gonna be the KS Rage dropper, which will range in travel from 125 millimeters on the small, all the way up to 190 millimeters on the XL. Throw all of that together and you're gonna get a bike that weighs 31.3 pounds. The Meta HT Essential is actually only offered in one color and that's called Keswick Green. I hope I'm saying that right, but it's kind of a dark greenish blue. Almost looks like a British racing green. Looks really nice, I like it. Moving our way towards the top, we get to the Meta HT Race, which is gonna cost you $2,500. Interestingly, this is the only bike that Common Saw has decided to spec with Fox and Shimano instead of SRAM and RockShox. So if you're a big Shimano Fox fan, this is probably the bike for you. 
Staying true to Common Style's commitment to super rad frame colors, the Meta HT Race is offered in matte graphite, which is almost like a raw aluminum look, and then dark slate, which is kind of a dark gray with a little bit of brown in there. You're gonna get a 150 millimeter Fox 36 performance fork and a 12 speed Shimano Dior drivetrain. Brakes are also gonna be coming from Shimano, but weirdly enough, you're actually just getting two piston brakes with this guy. Now, I haven't ridden these in particular, and seeing as they're coming from Shimano, I'm really hoping that they're gonna be decent. But like I say all the time, I really think that an aggressive hardtail deserves some nice four pot brakes. Other than that though, the spec seems to be pretty much identical to that essential model. So you're really just paying $500 more to get Fox and Shimano instead of RockShox and SRAM. And while I do personally believe that yes, the Dior drivetrain is better than SRAM's NX option, I don't think it's $500 better. And if you really wanted to go and upgrade it, then I would just take your $500 and get whatever drivetrain you want. Now, of course, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong and there are some spec changes that maybe I just glanced over. But if this really is just an essential with the Dior drivetrain and the Fox 36 up front, I really don't think it's actually worth that extra $500. But on the bright side, the last bike that we're gonna talk about today, the Commonsall Meta HT Owens Edition that sets you back $2,900, I definitely do think is worth the buy. As the name would imply, this thing's gonna come with the Owens RXF 36 fork in 150 millimeters. Owens makes super high-end mountain bike suspension, and so it's really cool that you can get this spec on a stock bike for under $3,000. You're also gonna get a SRAM GX drivetrain and Shimano's XT four piston brakes. And those three changes, the fork, the drivetrain, and the brakes are probably the biggest ones to talk about. The rest of the build from the wheels, the tires, and everything else that Common Saw specs with their in-house brand Alpha remains about the same from model to model. But those three changes end up making this the lightest Meta HT that you can get at 29.7 pounds. The Meta HT Owens Edition only comes in one color and that's silver. I think this looks really nice with that yellow graphic on the fork. It really is a great looking bike and honestly, a great value for what you get at it for just being $3,000. Speaking of value, that's what I wanna talk about next. Which of these five bikes would be the best choice for you to go ahead and buy right now? Out of these five bikes, there's three models that I would recommend depending on your budget. At the lowest end, it's gonna be that Origin model, but including the $150 more to get the dropper post that comes with it. $150 is a pretty good deal for a new dropper post, and if you're buying a bike for the first time, it might be nice to just already have one that you know is gonna fit your frame and have it pre-installed for you. Well, there's arguably other companies that will give you a better spec choice for $1,550. I think there's something to be said about the high quality frame that you're gonna be getting if you go ahead and buy that Meta HT Origin. Aside from a few geometry numbers that I personally don't agree with, I think this is one of the best hardtail frames on the market right now. And to be able to get that in a complete bike for just over $1,500, I think is a great value. Yeah, you're probably gonna wanna put an air fork on there at some point, maybe replace the brakes or the drivetrain, but you can do that over time. The one thing you don't wanna have to replace is a frame. And I really don't think you're gonna have to if you buy this bike. The next killer value is gonna come from that Essential model. Like I said earlier, I think the name Essential fits this bike well because it pretty much has everything that you need to be able to go out and enjoy a ride on. It's got four piston brakes, it's got a really nice fork, and yeah, the SRAM NX drivetrain isn't great, but you can replace it piece by piece and upgrade yourself to GX over time. Honestly, I think there's only a few other bikes in the market that are gonna offer you more bang for your buck than this Meta HT Essential for $2,000. The last value buy is, as you guessed it, that Meta HT Olin's edition. And I know that when I say value, some of you probably just think cheap, and this definitely is not a cheap hardtail. But when I think of value, I think of what you're getting for the money you're spending. And I think there's hardly any other bikes out there that offer you such good spec choice matched to such a high quality frame than the Meta HT Olin's edition. There's nothing on this bike that you need to change, and I trust that all of these components, if they're upkept well, are gonna last you a really long time. The Meta HT is a super dialed frame, and with it coming in those five build options, really there's one for everybody. And I think that's why it's one of the most popular aggressive hardtails on the market today. If you have any questions for me on this bike, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and please let me know if I missed something too. I've personally only ridden one of these a handful of times when borrowing one from a friend, so if you have actual experience on this bike, I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. After you've done that, you know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, then grab your bike, go for a ride, and hopefully, 
I'll see you out there.